With the Battle of Toba Fushimi concluding in an imperial victory, and Tokugawa Yoshinobu sailing to Edo after the loss, we now need to touch on the aftermath, especially Osaka Castle. February 1st, 1868. At this time, nothing was really left of the former shogun's army in the Kyoto-Osaka region. The fleet, carrying Yoshinobu, was also carrying around 180,000 ryu worth of gold from Osaka Castle, which is pretty significant as that castle was an important symbol of the Tokugawa clan's power in western Japan, and it had just been abandoned. Yoshinobu had lost his chance of keeping his power, because if you remember, Yamanouchi Toyoshige had wanted to keep Yoshinobu in power as the emperor's direct representative. He had even gotten the support of a majority of the province representatives there. However, many of the military men within Tosa had disagreed with him. The Battle of Tobofushimi had put those same men into armed conflict with the shogun. Any chance of having Tosa support the shogun now was truly dead. And that's not to mention the fact that several daimyo who had stayed neutral now knew of not only the emperor's banners being flown against the shogun, but also of his defeat. They now proclaimed support for regime change. On January 31st, the imperial court had ordered the confiscation of the shogunate's lands. By February 5th, when Yoshinobu had landed in Edo, he was essentially now just a landless daimyo. He would then take up residence in the former shogunal palace and waited for more news to be heard. Leon Roche, the French representative, actually approached him about landing French colonial troops to aid in retaking Kyoto. Yoshinobu declined, which shocked him and eventually caused him to resign his post. Those in Kyoto at the time were now wanting to attack what remained of the former shogun and his forces within Edo. Especially since Osaka Castle was handed over to the imperialists after Yoshinobu abandoned it, and a good part of it was burned down. However, they didn't really have the money to do that at this time. One of the things that they did to make sure that they had the funds was to appease the Western traders. On February 8th, they told the Western powers that they were simply restoring the old monarchy and would honor all the old treaties from the old government. On the 18th, the foreign representatives responded by saying that they would stay neutral in event of a civil war. Now, March 8th was an incredibly busy day. Over in the Azumi province, the commander, Manura Motowaki of Tosa's 6th Division, was there to garrison the port of Sakai, as it had previously been by the shogunate. Also, there was the commander of the French Far Eastern Fleet, Commodore Gustave Ohier, I might say that wrong, who was tasked with surveying the waters off Osaka Bay. A hundred of his sailors had landed in Sakai for shore leave, and it wasn't soon after this that the Tosa samurai there started to hear complaints about the sailors harassing women, barging into homes and temples, and even starting fights with local merchants. One of these sailors is said to have stolen a regimental banner from one of the Tosa soldiers, which, of course, was massively shameful for the regiment there. This resulted in the sailor being chased down in the street and beaten, and the banner was recovered. Now what happened next is technically hearsay, but it's said that the French then fired upon the Japanese, which in turn caused them to fire back and then attack them with their swords. Nine sailors and a midshipman died in this fight, with two more dying of their injuries later on. It doesn't seem like any of the Japanese were wounded. This would be known as the Sakai Incident. Word of it soon reached the ears of Yamanouchi Toishige in Kyoto, who then asked British Minister Algernon Mitford, who was staying at the Tosa clan's residence, there to help him mediate a solution with the French. The French laid out five demands. The commander of the Tosa samurai and his men involved decapitated. Payment of 150000 paid by the Tosa province. And a formal apology was to be made by an imperial prince aboard a French warship 
and another formal apology, this time made in person by the daimyo of Tosa to the French consul. And now Tosa samurai are now forbidden to carry weapons in ports open to foreigners. Around a week and a half later, Prince Yamashina Akira would step on the deck of the French flagship Venice and publicly apologize. Around the same time, 30 men were sentenced to death. However, the French would relent and say that they were satisfied with 11 committing seppuku. It was just simply too hard for them to watch this. Now, I did say the 8th was a very busy day, so while the Sakai incident was going on, the Imperial Army left Kyoto and took three different routes. One taking the Tokaido Road, one taking the Nakasendo Road, and the last one taking the Hokuri Kudo. All of these were going towards Edo to finally end whatever was left of the Shogunate. Kondo Asami, the leader of the Shinsengumi, after the Battle of Tobofushimi, had fled to Edo. Once he was there, he met with the Shogunal military commander Katsukaishu, and they discussed everything that had happened. Kondo, after the meeting, would then form a new unit from what was left of the Shinsengumi called the Kyoyo Shinbutai. They would leave Edo on the 24th of March. Kondo and his men had hoped to occupy the Tokugawa stronghold of Kofu. However, the Imperial Army reached it first, and after a brief struggle with local combatants, occupied it. They then met the shogunal forces at Katsunuma on the 29th. The Imperial Army, however, numbered 3,000 strong, while Kondo's forces only around 300. Impossible odds. Kondo's force would take on 179 casualties, while the Imperial forces would take on 103. Kondo, recognizing that the battle was lost and choosing to fight another day, would flee with the rest of the survivors. They would try to escape to Aizu, which was still in control by Tokugawa loyalists. Kondo Asami would not be so lucky. He was captured at Nagariyama in Chiba, and a bit afterwards, he was decapitated by the new government with Itabashi. On the screen now is a newspaper article declaring Kondo's death. This was circulated in and around Edo, further demoralizing those within. Oh, hey, you actually made it to the end of the video. Good for you. Now, do me a favor, check out those videos over there if you want to learn more about Japanese history. And do not forget to slash that like button, feed the algorithm gods. See you next time.